guys, I've got a lineup downstairs in five minutes. I need to fill it out. Volunteers? Fine. Pritchard, how tall are you? 5'10". Good, you just volunteered. You're one. Mr. Karpov, you're two. I don't need your court order. You're just wasting everybody's time. And we'll see. Landau, you're three. What's wrong with me? Sorry, Harry. You're too short. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Nolte, you're four. I need one more. Sharky, you're in the lineup. You're five. Not me, Lieutenant. I just finished the double shift. I'm not asking you. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Come on. Gerald, this is Mr. Hoffman from the district attorney's office. No, just relax. It's one-way glass. They won't even know you're here. You ready? Yeah. Okay, send them in. That, that's him. That's the guy. You, you recognize him, don't you, Devo? Uh, he's wait, 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 wait. Don't say anything. We have to do this by the book. We have to wait till they all step forward. Hey, do you know where Ryan Sharkey's at? He's downstairs in the lineup. Number two, step forward. Turn to your left. Thank you. Number three, step forward. Is that you? <laughs> You're pathetic. Thank you. Number four, step forward. Number three, please put the yo-yo away. Number four, turn to your right. Thank you. What's your problem, bud? Here's my problem. Number four, please let go of number three. Number five, stop kicking. Number two, step forward. Number three, please let go of number four. Step forward. Oh. How's it going? Please stop. Stop. Stop, please. Please let go of number three. Whoa, Sergeant. Oh, wait, wait. He, he's in there. The killer's in there. Well, I'm sure he is, Mr. Vangle, but it doesn't matter. The lineup is busted. That might have been the worst lineup in the history of law enforcement. Yeah, it wasn't exactly textbook, was it? Captain, what should I do? You do your job, Randy. You write it up exactly as it happened. Don't worry about me. Hey, where's Carpon? We have to let him go. Sergeant, sit down. <sighs> I'm gonna need a statement from you, too. Leland, Natalie called to tell me that you've been fighting again. Are you OK? Uh, yeah, I'm OK. Why don't you ask about your boyfriend? Hey, Karen. Leland, I've never seen that man before in my life. Karen, you can stop pretending. Now you're just insulting me. Karen, would you just tell him? Leland, I know you want to kill me. I'd probably feel the same way, all right? But you got to understand, whatever happened between Karen and I didn't mean anything, all right? It was a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm apologizing to you. Who are you? Leland, he must be crazy. Karen, it was fun. You got to face the music. It's over between us, OK? OK, I don't know him. You've got to believe me. Do I? Yes, you do. You have to believe me. Why would he, why would he lie, Karen? Why would he say these things? Excuse me. Excuse me, Sergeant. Are you chewing that apple on your left side? Yeah, so? Why? 
Why? Because your friend knocked my tooth out two days ago, remember? Yes, I remember. But he didn't hit you on this side. The captain is right-handed. He hit you on the other side, your left side, the side, the side you're chewing on. Okay. The captain didn't knock your tooth out, did he? What, are you crazy? I'm remembering a few other things. You, you used to work in Mendocino, right? When we saw Michael Karpov in the park, his son was wearing a shirt. It said, Mendocino Day School. Michael Karpov lives in Mendocino. Uh, yeah, a lot of people live in Mendocino. I don't know Michael Karpov. I think you do. 10 minutes ago downstairs, you were wearing those clothes, and Karpov called you sergeant. That's right, I heard that too. How did he know you were a sergeant, sergeant? This is Disher, is Gerald Vengel still in the building? You work for Michael Karpov. We always suspected there was a cop on his payroll. <gasps> you killed Chicklet, didn't you? That's why you didn't shoot him? because you knew the bullet could be traced back to your weapon. Here's what happened. You lured Chicklet to the junkyard, but he fought back. He must have hit you, you were bleeding. You lost a tooth, and you had a big problem. Your DNA was all over that crime scene. The cops were on their way. You didn't have time to clean it up. You put your uniform on, you returned to the scene, but you knew forensics would be there any minute. What to do? What to do? Then you had an idea. I'm your husband. That makes it my business, okay? If you picked a fight with someone, if you could provoke them and get them to hit you, you'd be home free. They could find your tooth, your DNA, your blood. And nobody would ever question it. You told my husband we were sleeping together so that he would hit you? Okay, would you stay there? You can't prove any of this. I think we can. We can connect you to Carpop. We'll pull your, your phone bills, your emails, your bank accounts. Yeah, I think you might need a little more than that. That's the guy. I, I, I've been telling you guys all day. I saw him at the junkyard. That's the guy. Oh, uh, hey, are, are you done with that? Uh, it's not for me. It's for... Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's had a pretty rough day. That mouse was in my pocket. He was in my pocket. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle.